it's just before Ghana's Independence Day, um, 6th March 2023. And we're looking back, I mean, as a community of Legonites to just have a conversation about our experiences on Legon campus, how things have changed um, over time. And we're talking to multiple generations of people who um, raised their families on Legon campus, lived on Legon campus, and um, just to pick up some lessons, because as a, an independent nation, that word independent, <laughs> one may mm -hmm. argue that we are not truly independent yet, um, but what are some of the lessons we can pick up and make sure that we don't let go of? So this is a, a Sankofa moment. My name is Isi Ansa, and I'm talking to Professor Kofi Saripuku, and uh, many may know him as Prof Opuku, but for me, he is Pa, because he's a father. And um, we're going to ask him a few questions and glean some insights from him. So, Pa, you're very welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Isi. Wonderful. Good to see you. Yes, 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 yes. Amazing experience. Um, could you could you share with us, you know, what brought you to the Ligon community after your studies, you know, moving into, what year was that, moving into Ligon and living and working there? Okay, well, I left Ligon as a student in 1959 mm. and went to the United States to study at the Yale Divinity School, intending to become, uh, to follow my family tradition and becoming mm. a minister of the Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. And so I studied at Yale and then went to Germany and then came back to Lebanon in 1967. Okay, wow. Now, while I was at Yale and uh, studied or delved into Christian theology and ethics, mm -hmm. I was drawn back to my own African traditions mm -hmm. because I felt that some of the things we were studying in theology, Christian ethics, we also had some in our own tradition. Mm -hmm. And so it was while I was at Yale that my focus kind of changed okay. mm, from Christian theology to African religion and culture. Mm. So when I came to Legon in 1967, instead of going to the department of theology and, and, and religion, you mm. know, I went to the Institute of African Studies. Fantastic. And became a research fellow in religion and ethics. Okay. My mm. decision was based on the Akan proverb. Mm. Literally, it's the person who has carried water and palm wine who knows which of the two is heavier. Mm. I had taken the trouble to study Christian theology to the highest level. Mm. And I had been to the Mecca of Christian theology, which mm. is Germany. I studied okay. at the University of Bonn, studying theology and ethics mm. for, for one year and a half. Okay. And so I went to the Institute as a research fellow in religion and ethics. And I think that is where my real learning began. Okay. Because doing research, <laughs> traveling to all kinds of places, witnessing ceremonies and interviewing elderly people, mm. both at the shrines, okay. because the shrines contain a lot of cultural knowledge that mm. we need to have. Mm. Mm. Spending time with our Kung Fu and, you know, people <laughs> wondered what had happened to me because mm. my family was, my grandfather was the first African to be ordained by the Presbyterian Church in September mm. 1st, on September 1st, 1872. Wow. My father was also a minister. So I was going to be the third generation Ukuku minister in the Presbyterian Church. Mm. But when I came back, I had turned into something they could not figure out. <laughs> but I knew what I was doing. Wow. And um, working at the Institute as a research fellow in religion and ethics enabled me to travel around and acquire a lot of knowledge. Mm. My language improved. I learned a lot of proverbs and came to understand our culture. And in fact, I think that I never stepped, I spent, I went to school from 1940 to 1959. Mm. And I didn't learn anything compared to what I learned as a mm. research fellow in religion and ethics. And that's what has yeah. made me who I am. Okay. As I, 
Okay, so so this brought you to Legon in 1967. 1967, yeah. Okay. And um, your time on Legon campus, when did you retire and then leave the Legon community? I retired in 1994. Okay. Okay. I retired in 1994 and went to the U.S. Okay. So if you are to look at the journey between 1967 and 1994... What are, what would you make, what would you identify as two of your, one or two most memorable experiences on campus? And then I would follow that up with the evolution between 1967 when you went there as a fresh lecturer, um, all the way through till you were leaving um, the, the, the campus community. Well, my experiences as I entered the community mm. were that I found a community that was caring. I got mm. to know so many people. We became mm. family. Okay. You know, we were visiting each other and through our children going to school together, mm -hmm. we got to make friends and become very, very closely mm. knit family. Mm. I mean, I, in my own experience, I performed outdooring ceremonies for for people. <laughs> I would even mention, since you mentioned uh, Professor Akusua Pebi, when mm. Akusua Pebi was being customarily engaged, you mm. know, I was, Professor Nketiah called me to perform the ceremony. I was the man, one who, who ah, did everything, you I know? See. And uh, so I know Akusua's uh, married, married life from the beginning, you know? <laughs> Interesting. And then I would even mention the Ajays, the Ajay, mm. uh, Auntie, Auntie Monica, Auntie Monica. Mm -hmm. I was being engaged and I was the, I was the, the, the linguist and, and it was such a great community mm -hmm. feeling. We cared for each other. We, mm -hmm. we became fast friends. And uh, of course, living opposite you, I went to, I was in a coffee hall with your father, mm -hmm. you know, but then we became neighbors and mm -hmm. you became my fourth Opoku daughter to this yes. day, you know, <laughs> and it, it's, it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And of course, where we lived, we were, we were relatives with the Atukwe's and the, and, the, and and all these other people, the Siamas and, you know, Professor Dixon and Nketiah and Saki and so, and Bami. We were such a closely knit family. Mm. We relied mm. on each other. We cared mm. for each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, our horizons expanded simply because we had so many friends from so many different parts of the country. Mm, mm. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And um, how did you see the community evolve over time? Well, over time, by the time I was leaving, somehow, um, things were slightly changing mm. because, um, you know, some, some of the people have retired before I left. Mm. And some younger people had come, and and the generational difference, you know, mm -hmm. affected my 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 experience in the community. I didn't mm. know the younger ones as mm. much as I did the older ones, mm -hmm. and um, the children. It was especially our children who mm -hmm. really uh, were the link mm. and who mm. brought the family feeling closely together to mm -hmm. this to this day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the change was also noticeable, even among students. Mm -hmm. Interesting. In, in our time, we could sit and have dinners and uh, have after dinner conversations. On Sundays, they would bring special people to high table for dinner. And then after dinner, we would go to the garden and have conversations with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was during such Sunday evening dinners that I met some of the great politicians of the time, Bedema, J.B. Dankwa, mm. you know, and we had intimate conversations with them. Okay. And it, it, those experiences expanded my horizons. I got mm. to know some of the leaders of the country mm. coming to Begon. But by the time we were leaving, you couldn't even hold a dinner with the students. Mm. You know, They couldn't even sit. Mm. And, and listen to after dinner talks, and mm. you could see that the culture was changing, and this had also affected. Mm. <laughs> this had also affected the the, the, the families, and mm -hmm. 
And of course, today you go to Lebanon and it's like Makola, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, so many people, you can't even count them, you uh -huh. know, struggling uh -huh. against each other everywhere mm. you turn. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then, of course, I must talk, also mention that, you know, the, the, the community, the, the campus was very clean mm. and orderly. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you one story. There was a barber. Mm -hmm. who was working at Limon, and I used to go to him. And he was from Adukrom. Okay. And he told me that he first came to Legon in 1958. Okay. And he walked into Legon from the main entrance, you know, and when he got there, he said in Pree, <laughs> he was so impressed by the play uh -huh. that he was even have opted for working without pay mm -hmm. because the place was so beautiful <laughs> and orderly. Yeah. And I think, you see, the, the, the orderliness mm. of the campus, the entire campus, mm. had an impact on us too. Okay. Because when you compare the conditions in, in our days to what you find now, mm -hmm. the place has changed so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you can tell that the the, the, the the inner spirit, the inner mm -hmm. thinking, mm -hmm. you know, of mm -hmm. the of, so the people mm -hmm. there is reflected in the outward disorganization and filth and confusion that you find. Mm -hmm. The gun is not as clean as it used to be, it unfortunately. Be, yeah. I think yeah. that something needs to be done mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's not only Lebanon, the whole country. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very true. Particular attention to our surroundings. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. your, your surroundings impact you. Mm -hmm. And the importance of the surroundings is that if you live in beautiful surroundings, mm -hmm. flowers, nature, orderly, you are always inspired. Mm -hmm. But if you live in surroundings like what we see now, mm -hmm. you know, the party would say, well, bros in Sumanazi, you know, <laughs> you, you, your spirits are lowered. Lower, you know? yeah. And we would not admit that we are, we are not an inspired people. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we were an inspired people, we wouldn't live, we wouldn't accept living in surroundings like this. Mm -hmm. And the uh, surroundings on the campus in our day were mm -hmm. such that, you know, the, it harmonized with our inner spirit. And we mm -hmm. all grew into, into decent human beings. And what I find amazing is mm -hmm. that our little children who were going to school and back and forth, see what has become of them. Mm -hmm. I and mean, who would have thought that a few years after after we have left, you know, our children will be going to America to school somewhere. As she would go and get a PhD. I mean, she was a little girl who was an Opoku. Spent all his all her time with Opoku. Yes, <laughs> for the age, you know. And I wonder if these things are still mm. uh, being experienced on the campus. But yeah. I mean. We look for back to the campus. I talk to my children a lot with mm -hmm. Minis about what we call the big old days, you know, mm -hmm. the passion for learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the teachers in the primary school, they cared yes. for the children, you yes. know. Mrs. Yes. Booker would teach my girls English and, you know, they would, yeah. you know, and go on. And, mm -hmm. and the, 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 I wonder if it's still there these days. But when I go to Lebanon now, of course, I don't know anybody. I'm a yeah. church house. And I look it's... at them and nod my head. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I experience when I go back to campus is, you know, back in the day, I don't know whether it's because our parents came in cohorts. And so their children tended to be around the same age. And so mm. you would find the peers, you know, just literally all over campus. You find young people walking around, etc. Now, when you get to Legon campus, especially the Lua Hill, Little Legon, um, Legon Hill, you find very quiet communities, no sight or sound of children. Um, mm. Their presumption is that they are indoors, maybe on video games, reading, or maybe you have younger, <clears throat> younger people who are living on campus with, you know, mm. very little children who may not be able to, you know, wander around like we did. But it's one of the very marked differences I notice when I get when I get onto campus these days. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, we've stayed in touch with um, a lot of our teachers. So the different year groups from, you know, UPS, 
um, have reached out to some of the teachers, Miss Ansa, Miss Apia, Mrs. Koka, uh, Mr. Ata, you know, and, um, we're looking to do more of that, you know, which is even, why we're having these Mr. Yes, 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 know, yes, yes. And, and yeah. So on. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but what are some of the lessons we can take from our Ligon experience so that now you have many of us who've moved, like you mentioned, who've moved and live outside the country or live in Ghana, but in different communities, the very sheltered, very structured environment that we grew, grew up in or that you raised your children in um, may not be what we are used to living in now. You know, what mm -hmm. are some of the key things, maybe two or three key things that those of us who've experienced Legon have moved out of Legon into new communities that may be a little more chaotic, that may not foster the kind of social engagement, intellectual engagement, etc. One or two key lessons we can take wherever we are so that we can, in our own way, build a community that is similar to the Legon we experienced, you know, with the mm -hmm. values that we picked up. Yeah. Well, you know, the the idea, the community experience that we had, we shared mm -hmm. at Legon, um, molded us mm -hmm. and gave us values which have enabled us to progress and improve on our lives, mm -hmm. you know, as, as children who grew up on the campus. I still think that those values are critical mm -hmm. because even though we may talk about modernization and you know anything goes period in our lives, mm -hmm. those key values, a sense of community, mm -hmm. respect for nature, mm -hmm. love for orderliness, mm -hmm. because those of us who grew up at Legon, if we would make any difference in the life of this country, we are expected to take these ideas into our communities mm -hmm. and impact on, on them. Because mm -hmm. there's so much disorder in mm -hmm. Ghana today. Nobody mm -hmm. cares, are, you know, there's filth everywhere. But those of us who know must make our voices heard and actually give example, lead, lead by example, mm -hmm. you know, letting the communities know the importance of of nature, growing, planting trees. I mean, the trees that live on were mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Where in Ghana do you find trees lining any street? There's mm -hmm. no town or village. Mm -hmm. And we live in a country that does not even have, there's not a single park ah. <laughs> where a, a man or woman could go and get fresh air. All the land is taken up by mm -hmm. buildings, you know? Mm -hmm. And if we know, if we have this knowledge, if we have this experience, we need to take this to our communities and, mm -hmm. and strive to draw their attention to the importance mm -hmm. of, of, of healthy, clean surroundings. Because after all, our surroundings reflect who we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, if, if we are to be honest and, 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 and tell Ghanaians uh, who we are, as we, it's related to, to our environment. Mm. It will be disastrous. But mm. what one could say in order to encourage people and not to knock them down is to mm. say, well, let us endeavor to pay attention to our environment mm -hmm. because an orderly environment, and it's not poverty, it's simply yeah. knowing what is good. Mm -hmm. Let us appreciate nature. Mm -hmm. We used to take our children to the botanical gardens at Lebanon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there, were, there were some crocodiles, there were mm -hmm. the, the Palm Museum. Mm -hmm. My children know the names of the palms and the, you know, and we used to go, to, all that is gone today. Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. nothing. The Legon Botanical yeah. Gardens has been turned into a, a prayer ground or a, <laughs> you know, that people believe that that's a way to heaven. Well, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid. I don't believe that going to that garden to pray will take you anywhere except mm -hmm. make you poor and wretched, you know. So, um, you know, if we lived in a community uh, such as we had at Legon that shaped us, mm. let us endeavor in, in the face of the challenges, because okay. most most Ghanaians don't value these things anymore. Otherwise, we wouldn't we wouldn't settle for these mm. this orderly uh, you know environment and so okay. on. Yeah. Well, let me but, ask you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me ask you one key last question 
And then to wrap up, I'd love for you to tell us what at the age of 90 keeps you looking so young and fresh and very alert and just still on top of your game. Um, but before we, we end with what you are up to, um, <clears throat> there's been a conversation on the Lego Knights platform lately and um, just picking one or two thoughts from there. It's easy to get despondent looking at the world around us, whether it's global or local, but looking at Ghana. And there are those who say, brighten the corner where you are, make the difference where you can, however you can. And then there are others who would add, well, yes, we can brighten the corner. However, we have to be realistic that we're working against a system, you know, the, the, whether it's political machinery, whether it's policies that don't work, we're working, trying to brighten the corner is good, but then acknowledge that there's a whole systemic, you know, setup that doesn't make it easy for you to do your best, etc. In today's Ghana, where many of us are despondent, um, absolutely disappointed with the kind of governance we see around us, etc., what does a Ghanaian citizen do? What mm. does a Ligonite who's seen a good, you know, um, or experienced good sense of community, et cetera, what do we do in Ghana today, 2023? We're, we're turning, uh, what is it, 66 um, tomorrow. Um, mm. What do we do? Do we uh, go along with the bright in your corner and forget what happens around, just trust that you're doing your best? Do we work towards changing shifting the system which is herculean and in all these years we haven't seen any major systemic shifts what do we do besides yeah. Putting our hands up well, in the air? yeah what, what we need to do is not to um, you know become despondent or lose mm. our optimism mm. there's still a great future ahead of us and it rests on us mm. now brightening the corner means simply that those who believe that they can brighten the corner where they, they are mm -hmm. must get together. Mm -hmm. see, it's like-minded people mm -hmm. banding together who can eventually create the kind of situation that will bring the change that we need in that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, I must say that most of us today in Ghana are more interested in, in, in religion. You know, religion plays mm. too much a role in our lives. Mm. And, 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 and that, that should, because when we're growing up, you know, it, it, it wasn't like this. I mean, mm -hmm. people going to church every time of the day, mm -hmm. Jesus speaking in tongues and so on. We must abandon that. We, we must set time to pray and go to church, but we, can't, we shouldn't spend six hours going to church mm -hmm. while other people, I mean, I asked people, the Europeans in Accra on Sundays, where are they? Are they in church? Are they at the beach? They, they come to my forest to take mm -hmm. pictures of the trees and study the butterfly. Mm -hmm. Which of us goes hunting, goes uh, bird watching? Mm -hmm. Who knows the name of a single tree mm -hmm. or a bird? Mm -hmm. Are we interested? Well, we should be interested. Mm -hmm. All this is part of the development of the country, mm -hmm. you know? But finally, I mean, people must band together. This system needs to be changed. The two-party mm -hmm. system and so on that we have borrowed. We must, we must come up with an authentic system mm -hmm. that, that is our own. Mm -hmm. Borrowed water never quenches thirst, our ancestors said. And every bird flies with his own wings. Mm -hmm. We can't live mm -hmm. on a borrowed culture mm -hmm. as we are mm -hmm. doing now. Mm -hmm. That is very critical because if Ghana is to get anywhere, we must go back to the Nkrumah days when he was talking about African personality. Mm. You know, your consciousness as an African and what you can contribute. Mm. But once you lose sight of that energy, you know, well, you become, you know, what we have become. They say in Kenya, mm. if you make yourself grass, goats and sheep will feed on you. And everybody is <laughs> feeding on us. You know, the Chinese, everybody, we, we owe people money. We have no reason to owe money. Yeah. So those of us who know something must make our impact felt. Mm. And I'm convinced that if we do. But finally, we must not forget our culture. You mm. know? We, our culture should be the basis of our development. <laughs> and we can't live on a borrowed culture. Mm. Our ancestors mm. said, uh, you don't borrow someone else's teeth to smile. Smile with your own teeth. <laughs> you know, where is that? And we're always trying to borrow somebody's system. 
we must do original thinking, study our traditions and mm. make use of them. Because mm. every culture is a basis for development. Mm -hmm. But we have convinced ourselves that, oh, we must abandon our culture and borrow others. We will mm. never develop mm. if we continue mm. to borrow from the Europeans, the Chinese, or anybody else. Mm -hmm. Our own culture is the basis of our development, and that's what we must do, you know? Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So, Pa, thank you very, very much. This has been absolutely mm. wonderful. And yeah. at age 90, we're turning 90 in a couple of weeks, and mm. you're still up and about physically, mentally, everything, still very active. What's the what's the secret? I think the secret lies in a lot of the things you've shared, and I'm more interested in you sharing some of the activities you get involved in now, which keep yeah. you going. Yeah, you see... Um, first and foremost, um, I believe that everybody determines his or her own life by what they think and do. Mm. You know? Now, the Buddha said, if you want to know what you have been thinking, look at your life. Mm. You know, And so you try to do your own thinking, clear thinking, you know, open-mindedness. Mm -hmm. Now, most of us believe that the Bible says our life man is 70. Well, it was somebody's idea. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be your reality. Mm -hmm. And most people say, well, I'm 50. I'm, I'm, I have 20 more years to, to, to live. Well, mm -hmm. you said it, not God. So mm -hmm. in 20 years, your cells fold up and you're gone. So keep your mind open. Mm -hmm. Ask for what you want. Do your exercise. I work every morning. You know, one hour says, I live on, I will get yes. up and go all the way to the gate and up behind the great hall and every day. And mm -hmm. that has helped me to, mm -hmm. you know. And then, of course, um, you know, most people think that as you age, you'll be saddled with diseases, cancer, dementia, and so on, you know. Well, by, by fearing and being anxious about these diseases, you are actually giving energy to them and inviting them to come and reside in your mm. in, on your body. Mm. I, I go by a, a very wise Chinese proverb. And the mm -hmm. proverb says, you see, you cannot prevent birds from flying about your head, mm. but you can prevent them from building their nests in your head. Mm -hmm. So cancer, this, that, well, let them go. They don't have to come to you. Don't think about them. Mm. You know, think positively. Think that you are healthy. You're going to live a healthy life. And mm. that will carry you a long way. Mm -hmm. As I sit here, you know, I don't feel any different than when I was 30 or 40 because I, wow. I'm active. Mm -hmm. And then, I, you know, I try to, and it's very important. We don't seem to know this, but it is very important to get close to nature. Mm. Appreciate nature. Go to the forest, look at the plants. When you pass by a tree, look at it, admire it, mm. you know? Um, the Japanese have a, 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 a practice that they call shinyoku, forest bathing. Mm. If you sit under a tree for 20 minutes, just 20 minutes, mm. the, the health benefits that you mm. derive are incalculable. Mm. Interesting. And so, you know, our country people used to tell us, Havana Asipo, you know, the Havana Asipo were better off than those who lived in the city. In the city, city yeah. And so on and so on. Because we were surrounded by trees. And so we must lead a movement of planting trees along our, our, our streets. In 19, mm. in 2012, I wrote an article about Farmer's Day in Ghana. And I suggested that instead of spending vast sums of money buying houses and pickup trucks as presents to best farmers, mm. let's put all this money together and buy seedlings and let's mm -hmm. run them along our streets that mm -hmm. are distressingly bare. Mm. And, and, and mm. then instead of celebrating um, Farmer's Day on, in December, mm -hmm. you know, our ancestors called December Openima, the beginning of the dry season. Let's push mm -hmm. it to the end of April, May, mm -hmm. and, and then during the rainy season, by the mm -hmm. time the rain stops, stop whatever we have planted will have, you know, taken root and, 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 and wow. germinate. You know? idea. Now, yeah, so if we will do what farmers do, plant something, mm -hmm. we could transform this country into the greenest spot mm -hmm. and we have to come to appreciate nature, the mm -hmm. greenery, mm -hmm. because our mm -hmm. very lives depend on the green. Honestly. Now look at it, there's, in the, there, there's no single street which is lined with trees mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. The middle of, the, of our roads are just bare, yeah. whereas we could plant palms and 
and, and nim trees mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. and Ghana will become a, a paradise. But mm -hmm. at the moment, we've turned Ghana into a desert, yeah. you know? And that doesn't speak well of us. Wow. So wow. keep an open mind, mm -hmm. you know, and believe that, um, you know, you can live as long as you want. Don't expect all these diseases. Mm -hmm. Let them like birds fly about your head. They don't mm -hmm. have to reside in you, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you do this, I'm sure, you know, there are other secrets that I only share with close friends. <laughs> Good man. So, Wonderful. but at least in the main, you know, mm -hmm. these ideas, abandon the idea that, oh, my mm -hmm. life plan is 70. No, mm -hmm. you can live longer than that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And why Wonderful. shouldn't you? And then what you need to do is to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. We are no less than anybody. Yeah. You see, if according to the Akan, you see what's your what your what day on what day of the week were you born? Sunday. Sunday. You see, oh yeah, sure, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> you, see, you know. Now, you see, when you mention AC, you know, you have actually mentioned God because AC is your credit, not mm -hmm. the day of the week on which mm -hmm. you were born. That mm -hmm. is Sunday. Mm. But we call it credging the name of the okra, the name of the path of God in you. Mm. Now, so according to our ancestors, God is in every. We didn't have to wait for the Europeans to come and bring the Bible. No, we knew mm. this long ago mm. that your credging, you know, means that your personhood or your identity is, mm. is grounded in God. Oh, credging. Mm. Mm -hmm. You see, that is the name of the okra. Mm. That's why the accounts could say, no, I will die only if God when dies. dies. If God does not die. So let the knowledge, your awareness of the fact that you have an okra, you know, propel you. You are no mm. less, you are not inferior to anybody. Mm. How can the God in you be inferior to the God in you? It doesn't mm. make sense. But mm. the Europeans have fabricated this racist theory. Mm. theory and, and of course, if you recite a lie over and over again, you know, it becomes a truth. And, and this we tend to believe that we don't have to believe this because mm. there's absolutely nothing wrong with us. Mm. We are the same as, and, and we can do anything anybody has done. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. So once we have this confidence, you know, that we are no less than anybody, mm -hmm. we can actually propel ourselves. And, 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 and I mean, if we mean business, Ghana can become the most impressive country in the world because mm -hmm. we have everything we have the brains mm -hmm. our ancestors left us with brains mm -hmm. how did they discover all these medicines and and foods you know mm -hmm. because they, they, they had confidence in themselves mm -hmm. but today mm -hmm. our education does not give us confidence you see mm -hmm. we don't learn about ourselves in school huh? yeah we go from nursery school to you know and we don't we don't know who we are we mm -hmm. don't learn about ourselves but mm -hmm. self-knowledge is the basis of all knowledge. Self-knowledge mm. gives you confidence, and confidence is the basis of every achievement that a, a human mm. being can make during their lives. Mm. So this is what we need to do, have confidence in ourselves. Not, we're not lacking in anything. So we don't have to accept, oh, Ghana is a poor country. No, Ghana is not a poor country. Ghana mm. is, is one of the richest countries in the world, except that those who live in Ghana are not even aware of the wealth and, and, and the richness oh. that they have. the house, I leave you with the house of problem. Okay. The house has say that ignorance, you see, mm -hmm. because this ignorance that has brought us to where we are now, ignorance mm -hmm. makes the chicken go to sleep on an empty stomach, mm -hmm. standing on a bag of corn. <laughs> if only the chicken knew that knew. it was standing on a bag of corn, mm -hmm. it would stay awake and eat, but it went to bed on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. We have to become aware of the riches, the rich mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. that our ancestors left us mm -hmm. and be proud of it and use it instead mm -hmm. of being ashamed and putting it to the side. <laughs> and we must stop going to church on Sunday and sing, Yen Ananum Dewas in Abusum. We mm -hmm. sing our ancestors worship trees and stones and we mm -hmm. worship trees. Mm -hmm. Singing in church to insult your ancestors and mm -hmm. you think we have found salvation mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. This is our downfall. Mm -hmm. We need to appreciate our mm -hmm. culture. It has immense value. Okay. Nobody has the kind of culture that we have in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we are the ones to be proud of it. Mm -hmm. You saw recently the British Prime Minister, an Indian, performing Hindu rituals. I couldn't imagine a Ghanaian president even pouring water on the ground. The Ghanaians would slit his throat. <laughs> <laughs> it's forbidden. 
but you must respect mm. your culture mm. and don't let somebody else interpret your culture for you. Mm. You mm. must interpret your culture yourself. Mm. Okay? Mm. So Fantastic. this is the message. All this will help yeah. you to live to be 90. And I wish uh -huh. everybody will live to be 90. And yes, then yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Pa. Um, in summary, you've told us <clears throat> what we learn and what we need to take forward is one, the community values. You're mm. asking us to live a holistic life, not to become so fixated on religion to the point of being um, not being productive, spending productive time, um, yeah. you know, on religion. Mm -hmm. You're asking mm -hmm. us to band together, you know, mm -hmm. and um, get the like minds together if we want to see any transformation. And for you, staying healthy at 90 really comes with mindset, you know. So mindset, um, walking every morning, being, and I, I remember you walking in your white shorts and your white tees, you know, growing up. And it's amazing to know that you continue that. You have a farm. Um, people do visit Aransakwai and um, come and see what's going on, learn about insects and, you know, trees, etc. And so nature, appreciating nature and reconnecting mm. with mm. nature, um, you're mm. telling us, keeps us going strong. And ultimately, it's about being authentic as Africans, um, as authentic as we need to be and um, yeah. not allowing ourselves to be um, influenced um, in ways that don't help us to progress. I hope I've, I've summarized um, your thoughts well enough. And if there's one word, just one word you can leave us with to have us think and start reflecting on anything that you've said, one word, what would that one word be in any language? Well, well, I'll say it in Cree. Obia Rampagin. Obia Mfa Ajin. Three, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll so take it. You, you translate that into, into whatever language you want. Obia Rampagin. Obia Rampagin. Wonderful. But thank you so much for making the time for a very wonderful conversation. Um, we'll listen to this, share it, and um, don't be surprised when you have a few more of us knocking on your door, looking to come visit um, the farm and, you know, reconnect with you um, again. Well, I'll be, I'll look forward to having some of you visit the farm yeah. and the forest. Maybe so we should plan an excursion. So we'll talk about it and plan, plan okay. a trip to come and see what okay. you've been up to. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All the best. Um, and a happy. Thank you so much.